pleasure to welcome in the head coach of the New York Giants, Pat Shermer. How are you? Done good, Peter. How's it going? Good, man. How are you? Weather's good. fabulous. This must be a great day to practice, right? Yeah, this is one of the best. You know, the last couple of days were um, hot and humid. Unfortunately, we got chased in because of the lightning. Mm. I do like the, the heat. Uh, if you don't get it this time of year and you don't work in it, then it's hard once the season starts. Yeah, exactly, because some temper sometimes it could be tough. But All right, second year, is there a big difference between uh, Camp 2 as opposed to Camp 1 last year? The amount of work we're trying to get done is, is, is the same. Um, I think every year you have little challenges with how you practice. You know, certain guys are at different stages of coming back from little injuries. Um, I think that's that's the way of the world mm -hmm. when you look around. Um, but there's a certain amount of work. You know, I got to try to get 53 guys ready to play the first game. And, you know, within that, um, you know, there's some banging that you need to do. Uh, we got to do some running. Uh, there's there's all the special teams work. And, and, and really the, the stress that you, you put yourself through physically and mentally of being tired and, and dealing with the elements, mm -hmm. obviously the heat this time of year, uh, it's all part of it. Offense, defense, special teams, all the things that you have to work on. Is there, is there one team that is, is easier to deal with or harder to deal with? Is there a big difference? Well, I think each unit uh, has its challenges mm -hmm. in terms of practice. Uh, I feel like we're inc incrementally better uh, on all three sides if there's such a thing, OD and special teams. And so we, we just want to continue to get our best players ready to go. And then the guys that are trying to make the team – give them an opportunity to make it and and that's where the you know playing well in the preseason games is important for them and then just see where we're at at the end hopefully we got a lot of tough decisions in terms of yeah, right. whittling this thing down to 53 what was the uh what was the hardest thing about last year and, and not just in terms of on the football field I, obviously we know it was a challenging season and disappointing but just overall taking over this job being in new york what was the what was the hardest thing for you well, I think uh, obviously we didn't start near the way I wanted to start, and you know we lost a bunch of close games, and th and that's why a lot of the focus this year has been about finishing. You know, we played really well through three quarters, and then you know we had you know four or five games at the end that you know in this league it makes a difference to be able to finish. So that was the challenge. Uh, the challenge is obviously staying uh, consistent. Uh, throughout sticking to your beliefs and I think we played much better at the end when we got our version of the 2018 offensive line intact you can see more of what our offense will look like uh, we had a lot of changes on defense um, so I think right now you know we stay healthy be more opportunistic we win those close games uh, and which which happened for every team and then we're talking about a different different season but was it of the of the ones that you ended up losing late which one ate at you the most was it the philly one? Oh god yeah. that was a very <laughs> tough one is there one that sticks out that you went you no know, you know I, I think each one of them you know you look at them for what they are you know the philly game certainly were up with 19 to nothing uh, you know, early in season Carolina, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, as you play through the season and then you're fortunate enough to win some close games, too. So some of that levels out. I think we just got to force it over the top where, you know, you got to go take those wins when they're there. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's part of the focus this year as well. Yeah, cause, yeah like you said, the 19 nothing lead against Philadelphia, the Tampa game in which you won. They. If there's another five minutes in that game, maybe it's a different story. Is it just yeah. learning how to win, learning how to close games? Well, I think that's the cliche part of it. Right. But you got to just go do it. Yeah. And, and I think that's that's the starting point for us was we we played well through stretches, and our younger players probably played way more than they should have been playing. So that in year two that helps them, and so we just got to go do it. Now, for for a neophyte, as a fan on the outside looking in, it's a big word. <laughs> I'm lucky I can spit that out. Is all right, the second half? Your general manager Dave Gettleman talked about you were better in the second half. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know the fan will look out, look at it, and say, "Oh, well, it's Tampa, San Francisco." When it really meant something, you ended up losing to Philadelphia. I mean, how do you how do you extract information out of all right? The second half, you were one and seven. The pressure's off a little bit. You made some trades. I don't know about the pressure being off. It didn't feel. It doesn't feel that way. Doesn't feel that way, but. Uh, you know, I think we played better. You know, we beat Chicago, mm -hmm. you know, we, yeah, and, and we won some games at home, which I think are important. 
But, you know, again, it, it plays into the consistency and being able to finish the games the right way. And then we're talking about a different season. Did, did the pressure actually step up? I think one thing we've sort of forgotten about with how much conversation there is about Odell was that Odell sort of made that decree of, like, we're going to make the playoffs, we're going to do this. And it seemed like people seemed to rally around that a little bit. Did that amplify uh, the pressure a little bit? Did people seem to yeah. be like, let's try to do this? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think it was a rallying cry. Uh, but I do think it was a, uh, hey, listen, you he, he noticed we were getting better, and he was confident about our ability to win games, and, and we did it to some degree. Well, so where did the pressure come from? When you say pressure, where is that coming well, from? Well, I, I I'm not sure I said pressure, but, you know, I think when I there's, said there was less, there's, there's less pressure, always, like, I don't know if there's well, less there's pressure. Always, there's always the pressure that we feel as competitors to perform and win, mm. and I think that's, that's just the way it is, whether you start the season well, or you know or medium or like the way it started for us a year ago there's always the pressure each sunday to go win you got to be better than the team you play on sunday that sunday mm -hmm. and and i think that's the challenge uh, it, moving forward it's such a weird sport because like in in basically no other pro sport do you look back at the last year and you can go well we we beat chicago here we because every week is so important right you play 162 baseball games or 82 basketball games or 80 hockey games it's just not the same but to your point it just seems like even when the losses mount up if you're a head coach particularly in your first year every week that in the building it's still each each win or loss is incredibly meaningful now first year second year third year it never I mean, stops it never stops and you know if you put it in baseball terms you know a, a, a win is like a 10 game winning streak a loss is like a 10 game losing streak yeah. relative to the numbers uh, mm -hmm. compared to baseball and so uh but we do it within a one week cycle but to your, you know, we, we you mentioned it earlier this is by far the i think it's the greatest game in the world you know you're talking about uh, a tremendous amount of talent you're talking about toughness which is demanded at every position that plays football and then the teamwork involved trying to coordinate and get 53 guys to play well and go the right the, the right direction and so it's it's an i think it's an amazing game i'm glad to be able to coach it and, and i'm looking forward to us having a good year i'm talking to pat Shermer, head coach of the new york giants here on the michael k show all right wide receiver you've had some uh, issues here in training camp how are you going to handle that going forward well, I, th I think we're working the guys that are healthy, and, you know, Sterling's out there working. we got a yellow jersey on him, uh, so he's not supposed to get hit. He's not supposed to catch balls. Well, Eli you know, just reacted and threw him one yesterday, <laughs> so everybody's panicked about it, but it's not that big a deal. He caught it one hand, and we moved on. Uh, and so, you know, nothing, you know, unfortunately, we lost Corey Coleman, uh, but we have guys that are, are filling in. Corey was a role player for us a year ago. Uh, helped us on special teams, but we got some guys to kind of fill in there. Um, and so, and we feel good about some of the veteran players that, that we have there, Latimer, Benny Fowler, obviously Golden Tate. You know, we've got, I really do believe when it comes to the receiving core, it, it, it's going to take a village. Everybody's got to get their production. And, you know, most of the time when you play good winning football, you know, and you look at the stats at the end of it, you know, you, you, you ran for somewhere around 100. You didn't turn the ball over. Quarterback completed a high percentage of balls. And typically, when you look at in terms of the receivers, you know, six or seven guys touch balls, mm -hmm. you know, or, or made their, you know, got their production. And so, you know, that's certainly what we're looking for. You know, um, unfortunately, you know, Odell was hurt the last four games. And so we had to play it that way. And, and we found a way to have success. Yeah, have you gotten to... Uh, obviously, the Golden situation is a bummer. Um, him, deal, you know, trying to deal with the fertility yeah. situation. It's, uh, there's a lot of layers to me that make that a bummer. But um, mm. he played in uh, CC Sabathia's charity softball game the summer that I was playing in. Okay. And I saw him rip a home run yeah. and then moments later come in and catch a fly ball behind his back. Right. And, yeah, it's just a goofy game. But, I, you know, I played baseball for a long time, catching a fly ball behind your back in an actual <laughs> game. I was like, this dude's a freak. Yeah. Have you gotten to really see any? And he's only been here a little while. How much you gotten to see of just Golden Tate's talent? We have. And, you know, he has baseball in his background. Certainly he was a, a fine baseball player growing up. Uh, so that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Uh, if if you'll talk to him, he'll tell you he's a fine golfer, and you know when he's out here running routes, he has a a really good knack for getting open in short areas, and uh, and then running with the ball after that, which he's displayed already to us. And so, 
with 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 golden situation i know it's it's on the horizon what the decision is going to be but he's been out here practicing like he's going to play week one and you know we're hopeful he'll be there but we'll just have to wait and see all right tell us about daniel jones so far daniel is uh has done a, an outstanding job and when i go back to uh being smart and tough and and getting it and being able to work and improve he's done all those things and you know i know there were some people that were critical of some of his traits throughout the draft. Well, we haven't seen any of that, so uh, we feel good about where he's at. Um, he competes. He learns. He doesn't. Re he doesn't repeat mistakes. Um, he's got really an aggressive uh, mindset in, in practice here, so he's trying to see what his can receivers can do down the field, which is important. And uh, we're just pleased with the progress he's making. What does getting it mean the most? Because something coaches say so often. What specifically do you mean when you say a quarterback gets it? I, it's one of those deals where you know it when you see it, and you know how he trains. He's here on time. He does all the things necessary. But when you say something on the field, or you know you do like today, we're in the walkthrough. You know, I asked him. I said, "You didn't have to do all this stuff in college." He said, "No, not really." Well, I firmly believe defenses push back harder in the NFL than they do in college. I had a young quarterback one time tell me. The hardest thing about being a rookie quarterback is dealing with some of the failure that comes with it. Like when you're in college at times and you're playing for a really good team, you can look out there and all the receivers are open. And so just pick one out and throw it. Well, here, because the defenses are so much better, you know, you can look out and maybe the guy you're looking at is not open, so you got to move on. Or and, and so being able to deal with that and go through that. And then that's the thing that he gets. He can move through it get to the open receiver, understands pressure and protection. And listen, he's a rookie. There, there's going to be some bumps in the road like it is for all rookies, but we're really pleased with where he's at. You are in a, a unique position as a head coach of managing the end of a legacy's career. And, and you've got a legendary player in Eli Manning. His contract is up at the end of the year. You've got the sixth overall pick kind of waiting in the wings here. How, how much of a challenge is that to, to manage a football season in which you want to win and want to be successful, but also making that transition from one era to the next? Well, I, I, I really believe Eli can still play at a high level, so that's where it starts. He's had an outstanding spring and, and early part of camp. And, and so, you know, you cross all those bridges when you come to them. You know, I think, you know, we're going to play the players at all positions that give us the best chance to win. Uh, Eli... Eli's known that since he started playing in junior high, and he's been that guy that's been the best player for many, many years, and, and I hope he continues to be. And we have open, honest conversations about everything, and uh, there's great respect for all the p people that you mentioned in, the, in, this, in this process. And we expect him to go out and help us win games, no. and then we'll deal with it from there. No, this is only your second year, but for a few years, we've heard that Eli still has it. But yet we haven't necessarily see it all come together in wins during sure. the season. Is that on him? Is that on the, the team? Or is it a combination of the two? Well, I think, you know, everybody has a piece in whether you win or lose. And, and I think, you know, last year we certainly were not, you know, I, there was a reason the team was 3-13. and 13. You know, we made some progress a year ago, and I think we're going to make much more progress this year. And it's about winning. And uh, I think we all understand that. So... You know, anytime you do something, everybody's responsible. Why is your offensive line better? I think we made some changes that will help us. Mm -hmm. And I think the young players that we had playing a year ago made progress. So uh, we're developing the young players we have, and then we're continuing to add veteran players that will help. And I think that's the reason why. If, 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 if you could say this specific group really excels beyond expectation, we end up having a good season or a better season than expected, which group would that be? Well, being a, being an old offensive lineman, um, you know, I think you know that's sort of like the engine in your car. You know, I, I really I really believe that, and I thought it really showed last year when we we did a better job of coming together and and, and blocking better on a consistent basis. It it sort of started to turn our year around, and but we need to do that from week one. All right, good luck this year. All right, really thank you. It. Really enjoyed visiting with you guys. Pat Shermer, as always, right. good to talk to him, head coach of the New York Giants.